Okay. So my mom, she drew this picture a while ago. I was reading a book called The Gnostic Gospels, and I shared this with her. And so I, she drew, I told her about it, and she drew that picture. That was me being angry and not accepting Jesus, and that was Jesus being upset that I don't accept him. Recently, though, I made a trip to Michigan to record all the, um, a lot of the instruments for school, and she drew this for me, which I think is really great, and people really like this one. It's me in the driver's seat and Jesus in the passenger seat. Um, and he's, you know, I guess I got some sheep in the background. So he's protecting me. And up in the corner it says, I am always with you. This thing I bought at Dwayne Reed. It's Mad Balls. Arr, it's your birthday. I'm just, I was drumming it over here and I told Greg, why don't we get the drum happening? And, you know, because we always get drum rolls. So I thought we would drum it and talk about it a little bit. Show you a couple other things here. People used to say, like, dude, this apartment's huge. This is really, because for New York, it's bigger than if you live in the city, you know, for what you pay. Um, but then they still say that occasionally, but I think they're more, they're caught off guard by how much garbage there actually is in this apartment. When I say garbage, I mean really cool stuff like an inversion table. But what you'll notice around here is these are, this is, a, I don't know if you'd call it a well-to-do area, I guess. That's it's a middle class. So the middle class doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. There is no middle class. Uh, well. well, it looks like th that's who lives here. I think they're kind of big now that I live in a little piece of shit um, apartment in Brooklyn. When I come back here and actually get in one of these houses and see the basement, and it's like four times the four times the size of my apartment, it kind of blows my mind a little bit. <sighs> Stop it. It kind of blows my mind because they were these they're fucking big they're big houses and if you drive down the road you can see ones that aren't this big if you go you know the further south you go on van dyke you get into the more low income areas you're heading towards detroit you've got like sterling heights and then warren fraser i don't even know what that is and that's where you get to more reasonable sized homes where they uh <laughs> reasonable size more reasonable sized homes where they don't they don't have to be so lavish and extravagant because there's really there's no need for that I don't think all the same I don't fault anybody who lives in one of these I do often wonder how they afford it you know what are you, are you in, in debt up to your eyeballs as they like to say around here or you know do you own some business here's Breckenridge if you want to look at that sign Breckenridge all right this is a Verizon bag oh I want to say this is brand new it's kind of not we used to have one that resembled this that we knew about for a really long time. There's the chicken. Do you remember Doug? We do. Um, rotting Christ. I mean, rotting Christ. I don't, there's a couple of good jokes about it, but none of them will be funny if I tell them because they're not jokes. When I say joke, I usually mean something that happened. Okay, we are here at Eisenhower High School. It's Michigan, Shelby Township, Michigan. Um, this is where I went to high school made all kinds of music, paid attention, used a lot of drugs more than anything else. That was kind of my thing. Although I did well in school and had my bands and my books. Here's where I uh, studied. I learned all this shit. Um, in high school, more in high school than anywhere else, my one of my big challenges was finding a girlfriend. I used drugs all the time, and that was my primary concern in life. And in my head, whether I was high or whether I was coming down or whether I was not even high at all, I always imagined that there was some girl, some kindred spirit that went to our, our high school who liked drugs as much as I did, who would be able to hang out with me and get high as much as I wanted to. And we could have sex and get high and have fun and, you know, she would totally understand me. And I never found that in high school, I don't think. Um, there were certainly girls who smoked pot occasionally at a party. And then you had a couple, like, smelly girls who, um, you know, someone told me the one was smelly. I never smelled her. But um, you had a couple girls who did, like, party and use drugs and were like, I want to trip out and have the fun. But um, they, it seems like since there were so few of them that they were always taken. Like, they are always taken by this shithead... Uh, druggy guy who's about to die or something not the one who had it together like me and uh, one time I tried seducing one of these druggy girls I brought her to a concert I brought her to a dream theater concert which at the time was a band that I liked a lot and she basically kind of coerced me into leaving 
on, uh, on sexual pretenses that, you know, we were going to go fool around. And when, we, when I took her back to my house, that was not to be. It was all just a ploy to use my drugs and then go to this concert and then leave. Okay, we're going down to the basement. Um, I want to show you something from my past. This is these carpets I found in somebody's um, garbage, basically. And this is kind of my old studio. We'll show you that in a second. But So these carpets are garbage. They're not really, you know, I found them in the garbage. So they're really not worth anything, and they're just shitty anyway. And so I would jack off right here, <laughs> and then uh, I would come on this wall. And I came on there a lot. Oh, yeah. If you look, this is obviously like the most offensive piece of the whole thing. Can you hear? This is the grossest thing that's happened. So, <laughs> yeah. Greg said this is the grossest thing that's happened ever. You'll probably just hear that. Uh, can you see it up here, though? If you look back here, I started a new patch at one point because I thought this was getting too obvious. <laughs> one time I showed it to my brother, and he disliked it so much and was so grossed out and, like, disturbed by it that he didn't... Um, he tried to be like, dude, that's not what it is, is it? And I was like, oh, no, it's not, but he knew. And uh, he was like, I wish you hadn't shown me. Tell, uh, tell the champ where we are. We're at in Chesterfield Township, Michigan. My right store. Welcome. So I wrote uh, this album I'm working on is all about um, ages, my experiences from ages. We were all the same grades, two till little while after high school, which for me has a lot to do with subdivisions, riding bikes, um, family members, and uh, more than anything, drugs. Drugs turn up in almost every song. Um, so let's start with the family songs. You've heard um, a version of your song, Bruce's song, Dan's, and um, Mom's. Do you have any thoughts on any of those? Um, Dad's was kind of sad or bittersweet. Mine was kind of didn't feel like it necessarily 100% pertained to me, um, but it kind of made me depressed when uh, your one line about you don't have any dreams anymore, you just taste gold or something. <laughs> what? Um, and I don't think actually that I've heard Dan's song or Mom's song. Really? Yeah. I guess that's true. No one's heard Mom's song yet. No. It's a pretty one. Excuse me. Cheswick Court is unique in that it's the only time where everybody lived in the same house all at once. Daniel and That is true. It was the last time that happened. Hi, thank you for calling. Hello. No, where are you? I'd like to talk for a moment about what's different about this album in terms of the way it was recorded. Gear-wise, we have some different things happening uh, to anyone who's in the know. Converters, A to D converters, and uh, DA converters are something uh, pretty valuable to the recording process. And on this, not only did we have a really stellar converter to uh, use, a couple of them, um, we also utilized a uh, fair amount of vintage gear and modern gear. Even if it, we weren't actually using the piece of gear's function, we would be running stuff through it in order to take advantage of the sound that the transformers imparted on it. I'd also like to say very quickly that just about all of the the drum sounds are uh, the work of Jesse Wozniak, not me. Yeah, Peter, that was great. I don't want this water bottle here. Okay? We'll include big uh, yellow, man. Right? That copy has good. <laughs> Most of my work that I do for a living has to do with me being in a room with one other individual and creating songs for them. You know, I'm a, what they might call a song producer. Um, so I don't have the opportunity to do that, and as a result, I'm not very good. So get me in a room with a bunch of microphones and a drum set, and there's a whole lot of subjectivity and a whole lot of time experimenting with not a lot of know-how. So I'm very grateful that Jesse was here to step up to the plate, as he did on Love Spectacle as well, and um, really get some really killer drum sounds, which I, on my own, am pretty unable to. I've known Peter since I was in seventh grade, so that would make it uh, about 13 years. I love his music, and I love making it with him. I am uh, I'm a big fan of the Love Spectacle album. I think that was, to date, Peter's best production. His songs have come such a long way since the stuff he used to make when he was 18 or even when he was uh, 21 when we were still jamming that. He made some huge leaps, I think, probably from working uh, 12 hours a day for, what, three years you've been in New York now? Mm -hmm. That'll do it to you, man. That is your school. And so, 
your school of music, really. You did it yourself. One day I said something and Greg heard me say drum rolls and he said it and I thought it was one of the best things he's ever said. Um, so what we're really here to talk about is this album I'm recording right now called School. You got over here some lovely new, uh, we've got the drum rolls, the Lucid Converter I've been drumping with. All right, and you got Burl. There's Burl. And uh, this is where I've been drumping it. I've been drumping the... Uh, school making it happen here getting some uh editing done and preparing to record all the vocals on it and uh it's going to be a lot of fun i got a harmonica player um coming in here who uh, according to the website played the outro theme for a sesame street You got Kmart, 23 and Van Dyke. Uh, you know, this area should live on forever. I don't really like it, but it's got, uh, it's nice to drive through and it's nice to be here for about a week's worth of time. The seat's getting fucking hot. You know what we should, uh, are we gonna be back this way? To film the rink, the rink doesn't matter. There's the rink, I don't know. It's in one of my songs, it's about, I went there and my dad was like, here's an extra dollar. Here's the place in Shelby Township, Utica, that no one has ever been to. Uh, literally no one's ever been here for anything. Miraculously though, I worked here for a time. Uh, it's the Cortland Racquetball Club. Shh. I got I'm trying to figure out where we're going, Phil. Oh yeah. Um, I'm uh, Greg, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was the fucking story right here. This was so much of my youth. Looking at this, I'm reminded of what a loser I actually was. Um, yeah, oh yeah. I was, uh, I really had a tough time being popular and being cool. That never really happened for me until um, I kind of started partying and became known as a, uh, you know, an ardent drug abuser. Prior to that, I was really dorky. I wore these plaid shirts. My mom dressed me and cut my hair. This one I like quite a bit. This is one I made called Reboot. And it's got a tribute to Prince there. It says, computer blue, image, here's a keyboard. Got a big pink boot, you know, Reboot. This is Email Me. This is Blast. No one really cares. Green Books is probably one of the best pieces of art I've ever made. Patrick pointed this thing out and said it looked like a ham and it, that kind of cartoon ham you see in the cartoons and it makes him hungry when he sees that. Katie Faust went into FYE with Greg, the man behind the camera, and they looked at Rotting Christ. I'm giving you the second step of the story. They looked at Rotting Christ and it was out and Katie took the, the but it had the little place card for Rotting Christ and she took it up to the counter and said, do you guys have any more Rotting Christ? I said, I, I keep, here's the thing, I haven't talked at all about this, the, the themes of the record. I said, like, there's a song called Drugs and Girls. Really, what, what school is all about is me expressing the way I felt um, when I went to elementary school, when I went to junior high and high school, and all of the experiences that you have. It's not specifically about school or even going to class or being there. It just happens to be that that time in one's life, for me at least, um, that's when some of the most interesting stuff happen and you have all this innocence. It's not really innocence. It's just that you don't have any responsibility whatsoever. And uh, so it, during that time, you use... Keep it down. You use all the... Oh, yeah, it looks better. You use all the drugs. You make your friends. You know, you learn to masturbate. Um... You, you know, you read your books, you like your movies, and you kind of don't have to have a job until, you know, some people never get one. I think I got one. The first, like, job where I went to all the time was at age 14, and I never really stopped working. Um, but in, in making the songs for school, I was able to kind of record those moments and the way I felt during them and what they actually meant to me and convey that through song. Let me tell you another Rotting Christ story. Me and Greg were in FYE, and we saw all these Deep Purple DVDs. FYE in uh, Utica, Michigan has so many Deep Purple DVDs. There's like 10 of them, and they're all different. It's miraculous. 
Um, and then we saw Rotting Christ. He was just sitting there. I said, Rotting Christ. Um, it's funny to me. This is, I'm not going to use it. Well, you have to use it. I'm not going you to. You have to use this. I'm not going to. You have to use this. It's not Look, good. Film this. Film this. No, this is stuff. Get this. I'm serious. Watch. It's not anything.